Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Wednesday afternoon, August 25th. We are looking at Window Traders Market Profile of SPY, I, I'll start again, SPY IWMN, triple Qs. So, new all-time highs again for ES and NQ. Right now they're in the regular trading hours. Um, huge factor is this volume. Yesterday we did under 39 million, we're at 37 million now at the after hours, so we're barely going to do more than 40 million, I think, at some point today. Again, for the small time frame plays, does it matter? No, it doesn't. But in the bigger picture, it's certainly going to matter at some point. The market did tremendous volume in a 20 cent range in SPY most of the afternoon, most of the day, in fact. The print on the close ended up coming down here, but we did at one point over 30 percent of the day's volume in a 20 cent range i do believe this market went home still pretty long even on the short time frame because everything that was done maybe some got out here in uh j through l but i think the majority is long i think they're comfortable against the double distribution day if we open below c's high tomorrow though things can change now triple q's triple q's open rip right up to an all-time high taken out Regular trade now all-time high, and they're overnight all-time high, and then never see it again as they rip right down in B. It looked like they might attempt to go trend, which I didn't think they would, just like yesterday with Russell, when I said, I don't think they're going to go trend here after gapping higher and having higher value. Same thing here. I said, I don't think I'm expecting trend down. We didn't get it. They tried in B and C, but then we ended up, for the most part, with a B shape till M distorted it, and they end 11 wide. Is this decent excess? Well, we'll find out going forward. Russell. Russell ends with a trend day, but almost gave it all back late. M almost took back B singles. They had two sets like we did. We only end up with one. They only end up with one. They end only eight wide up above, and they end with a trend day. Spy and ES. Open in balance in value. I said I expect major chop inside of M's range. We got it. Um, and then we finally took out Yesterday's high went trend, traded sideways. Now, here's another thing I've been talking about in the room. We've had many days where we've hit all-time highs now, and what keeps happening? We keep getting these wide pox. For my money's worth, I think that could be some long-term players selling into it. They're not going to force it down. Why would they? They'll let all the retail traders such as ourselves and these grinding algos keep taking it up. When you do 30% of the volume in SPY in a 20 cent range, something's telling me that it's more than just uh, other short term players selling it in shorts in here. I think some big boys are also selling it here. I really do. Now, that's not going to anywhere come close to alleviating any kind of pressure if the market really decides to correct itself. They're doing it in a very subtle way, okay? But I still think that might be taking place here. I can tell you one thing. It's not long-term buyers up here. As far as my trades, I had a good day. I traded some real big size this morning and then do, didn't do anything till later in the day. So B period, I took a short against the overnight high. Took the uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, B period, not A. I didn't do anything in A because of the chop. B open. Yes, we were one time framing up. But the value at the time was still basically unchanged. I took a short against the overnight high, the 450 puts, and got paid on it when it came back. Then in B period, I started looking long. I was like, well, we didn't get the all-time high yet. We still have the overnight all-time high. So we now the value, B kept sticking up here, sticking up here. I bought 100 calls right above A's high in B period when we went back up. So after I covered my short when it came in, we went back up, I bought 100 calls. Not at the high, but around A's high. Well, it came against me initially, and I was just being very patient. And then in C, even though C took out B's low, I'm like, well, we do have overlap on a higher value now. I added 300, so I went along 400 calls right at C's low, got back above the opening, and peeled them off. Had a nice trade. And then when I was flat again and C got back to A's high, Bought 100 calls again and waited for them to pop the top and make money. So it was a nice trade. Um, 
overall it was very nice i was down on the hundred but after adding the 300 i made nice on the 400 total and then i made nice on the hundred then i didn't do anything it started its growing. yeah it did go pretty decent in D and E, but there's no way i wanted to buy it there's no way i was shorting it i was waiting for two-sided trade i was thinking about taking a short but never did then i was looking for a big long when we started one time for, uh when we finally came down in j but never got the flush at all missed a, f a long in k it didn't fill my singles it held it by two cents even though it filled singles in es but i got the chance in l now because it was l and it's getting later in the day so my initial plan was in k if they filled singles to buy a hundred and to buy a lot more somewhere around ease low down the value low of the 448s that didn't happen so when l came down i ended up only buying 20 came in some more i bought 20 i ended up recycling about 40 calls between uh k's low l's low and then back to pock nowhere near the size i wanted to do because late in the day things change especially since they didn't alleviate any of that long pressure 30 percent of the volume was done up here i don't know if they're going to really flush hard in l or m down to value low look what they did in russell so that's why it gets a little different later in the day IJK, I'll take that size call down here. L and M a little different. So, and then that was the last trade. So it was a good day, good day overall. So, as far as destinations, on the upside is only two. The POC from today, 449.06, nine wide, and then our all-time high of 449.46. For the downside, we did probe. I'm still going to use G's high. See where we open them all. 449.37. Then we don't have anything to the single prints, which are ease low, 448.71 to C's high, 54 cents. Then we have yesterday's, uh, today's low, 447.77. I was thinking about using L's low as an afternoon pullback, but the fact that it's literally five cents or so from where the single print started, I decided not to. I'll see. We'll see where we're trading tomorrow morning. And then you should have the... Uh, other downside destination would be yesterday's low of 447.42, and you should have the rest of them that I gave the other day. And then on the chart, <clears throat> now, monthly is up, one time frame it up for 10 months. Right now, we are $26 away from last month's low. Weekly, I've been saying balance to up. Guess what? It's Wednesday. We made a new high. I'm going to give the bulls their due. Calling the weekly up. And the daily, after failing to get the 50-day moving average four days ago, five days ago, we're now one time framing up four days. So all three time frames are up. Now, you have Jackson Hole starting them all. That's something, that's something could come out of that. I don't know what could come out of it that will make this market rip high, to be quite honest with you. If anything, they'll just be relieved, and we might continue this grind higher. I thought we had a good chance of getting 449.50 in SPY today. Missed it by 54 cents. We got 4,500 on the SPX. We got 15,000 on the NASDAQ composite. Thought we would get 450. Obviously, we didn't. It's still a target, but that doesn't mean anything. What does mean a lot is what's going to come out of Jackson Hole starting tomorrow afternoon and concluding on Friday. That's going to mean a lot to me. I hope you had a good day trading. Have a great evening, and we will speak prior to the opening tomorrow.